In this lesson we're looking at graphs of rational functions and there's two types of graphs that we're going to be looking at. So addition of ordinates graphs and reciprocals. Now addition of ordinates graphs are where you have two or more graphs that you're adding together and what you're doing is you're taking the y coordinates and you, you are literally just adding them together. So you'll end up with points that are either higher, lower or just in different places depending on the sign of the functions that you're adding. The other type of graph that we're going to look at is a reciprocal. Now we've looked at reciprocals before when we looked at reciprocal trig. So reciprocals are where you have like 1 over something or a constant, you know, it might be 3 over a function. And what that means is you can just consider the function as normal and then what you do is you flip everything. So the intercepts become asymptotes and the shape of the graph basically flips. So they're the two graphs we're going to look at. Now we've got three types of asymptotes that we're going to be looking at as well. The ones we know that are horizontal and vertical that you've seen before. We also have non-vertical asymptotes. Now these can be lines or they can be curves and they occur when we have a function um, behaving as x gets really, really large or really, really small. So as x goes, between, um, goes towards positive or negative infinity. So we'll look at that. So the first thing that we're going to look at um, is going to be addition of ordinates. Now there's an example here, these are your notes, and probably the thing to highlight here is the three points. So in addition of ordinates, the key points to look for, when both graphs have the same ordinate, or coordinate, when we, when we say ordinate it's just because we're looking at y, so that's why it's not a called a coordinate, um, the resultant graph will be double this. So what that means is, can you see down in this example here, we've got x squared plus 1 on x, this splits up into x squared on x plus 1 on x, which is the same as x plus 1 on x. That's what the function is when you split it. Two functions, the function x and the function 1 on x. Now you can see at this point here you've got the graph where you've got the two graphs intersection, uh, intersecting. They have the same um, y coordinate at these points. So what happens when we add the two graphs together is you end up with this point added twice. So we end up with a new point up here, sort of um, twice as high. So this is our addition of ordinates graph over here. So you can see we've got this point twice as high, the intersection point. And then we've also got the next point that they make is when both graphs have the opposite ordinate, the resultant graph y coordinate will be zero. And that basically means that the two things cancel out. So if you have an ordinate which is up here and another one down here in the two graphs, they will cancel and you'll end up with an intersection. In this example, we don't have any axis intercepts, um, but we do have two asymptotes. And the reason for that is, if you look at this red graph here, at this point, the red graph, 1 on x, is getting very, very big, whereas the blue graph is getting very small, approaching 0. So if we add these two graphs together, the resultant graph behaves a lot more like the bigger graph, the red graph, because that's the one with the bigger points, with the um, larger values for y. So that's why we've got that graph there approaching the red graph, whereas on this side, you've got this y equals x graph going off to infinity, getting really, really big, but then down here, the red graph getting really small. So our graph for our addition of ordinates will now behave like the y equals x graph. And that's why it sort of travels off following y equals x. And the same thing happens underneath. Now these two dotted lines here are actually asymptotes. Actually, more than that, this one. Not so much this one, because this one actually approaches its own asymptote, which is the vertical asymptote here. It's not been shown. So there is actually two asymptotes here. There's a vertical one, and there's also a non-vertical asymptote here, which is the line y equals x. So we're going to be looking at putting together graphs like that, and we'll also look at reciprocal graphs. But these are the key points to look for when you're looking at addition of ordinates graphs. So we're going to start off with this first one. This is in your notes, 1 on x squared minus 2x. First thing when you have something like this is to factorize. Always factorize in special because sometimes you're going to find that something nice pops out when you do that. Now, from last year, you would have looked at something called partial fractions. Partial fractions is a way of splitting up fractions when you have a product of two things going on. In this case, the product is this function, 1 on x, multiplied by this function, 1 on x minus 2. So you actually have two functions here. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and split up our multiplied fractions into two parts. The first one which was over x, the second one, which is over x minus 2. Now we use a constant on the top because what you use on the numerator of the partial fractions that you do is always one order less than the power of x underneath. These are linear, x is to the power of 1, so you have a constant on the top. If you had a factor like this, you would have 
something like that as the unknown on the top because that's one order less than the squared underneath. So we have constants. So what we're going to do is we're going to use partial fractions method to try and find what A and B is. So to split this product up into two additions of um, graphs. So what we do is we can cross multiply. And the reason we do that is to try and get everything over a common denominator. So by cross multiplying, you multiply the top and bottom of the first um, fraction by x minus 2 and multiply the top and bottom of the second fraction by x and what you do is you now have on the bottom line the same thing. Now what that means is you could actually multiply everything here by x times x minus 2. So if we did that the whole denominator would disappear and all we'd be left with is the top line. So the top line reads as 1 equals a outside of x minus 2 plus bx. Now this is the equation that we're going to use to solve for a and b to split up our, our um, fraction into two parts. So we'll go back to here. So what we can do is we can pick different values of x to make this um, easier to solve. Now this equation is actually uh, true for all values of x. So it makes sense to pick a value of x that's easy, yeah? So we're going to pick x equals 0 first. The reason for that is if I pick, pick x equals 0, the b will disappear. I'm going to have 1 equals a times 0 take 2. So that means negative 2a equals 1. So therefore, a equals negative a half. And similarly, I could pick x equals 2. That will make the bracket disappear. So we'd have 1 equals uh, a, 2 minus 2 is 0 but the b is going to still be there times 2. So that's going to tell us that b is equal to a half. So we now have our two values for a and b. That was the partial fractions part done. Now we can actually do the splitting. I'm just going to draw a line here so it's a little bit separated. Okay, so we've got um, our original function, 1 on x outside of x minus 2, is equal to a which is negative a half on x plus b, which is a half on x take 2. And if you wanted to, you could write this out as like negative 1 on 2x plus 1 on 2x minus 2, like that. It's the same thing. You've just taken the fraction underneath. So now what we can do is we can do, well, two things. The first thing is we're going to do a sketch. And we're going to label our intercepts and our axes turning points. So we've really got two graphs here to consider. The first one is 1 on 2x, or negative 1 on 2x. The second one is 1 on 2x take 2. Now what I'm going to do just quickly is to think about a couple of things. Um, what the shapes are for these graphs. Now we know that when we have a 1 on x graph, it is this type of graph here, the hyperbola. In this case, we actually have a negative at the front. Now, the negative means that instead of following a line like that, which is the positive y equals x line, we actually go in the opposite direction. So the negative turns our graph around, and we have a dilation of a half, so that's just going to change the width. So it doesn't change really the shape. So that's going to be the shape. This one is going to be the traditional shape. The reason for that is the there's no negative here, so the um, x is a positive, so it's 1 on x is the hyperbola. But this guy is also shifted. Now the shift here is going to be a shift that way of 2. Remember, it's always opposite. So in this case, we're actually going to have a graph where we've got our axes, and we're going to have an asymptote at 2, and then our graph like that. So that's basically the shape. So what we can do is we can draw and sketch a little bit of um, a graph and we can put in the asymptote I'm just putting that in at 2 I'm putting in some tick marks um, just so it's a bit easier to draw and then to finish what we're going to do is we're going to do two other things before I graph I'm going to look at for this first graph um, the intercepts so I know that this is um, negative 1 on 2x. I'm just going to look for the y-intercepts, yeah? So for this first one, y-intercept, when x equals 0, I know that when x equals 0, this doesn't, it doesn't occur. So we have no y-intercepts. 
And we also know that if we did x-intercepts, we wouldn't have any either because we don't have a shift. But with this one, when I do a y-intercept with x equals 0, we end up with 1 on 2 and 0 take 2. So it's going to be at uh, negative 1 quarter. So we're actually going to have an intercept sort of there, somewhere there. So I'm going to do my two graphs now so you can see them in different colours. I'm going to do this one in green, just because I happen to be looking at this one. I'll do this one now. I'm going to do this one in light blue. Now remember this one is flipped around, but this one has the asymptote here. Oops, it's a bit dodgy. At x equals 0. So it's that kind of shape. And both of these graphs, the green one and the blue one, they have the, uh, the, vertical, uh, the horizontal asymptote. So we've got these two graphs. They've now been sketched, this one and this one. Now what we need to do is our addition of ordinates. So for addition of ordinates, what we need to look for is, first of all, any intersections of the graph. Now I've roughly got an intersection here. I should actually find where this is properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let... For my ints, I'm going to let negative 1 on 2x equal 1 on 2x take 2. 2's cancel. I'm just going to flip, because you can do that, that's fine. And then if we take the uh, x over to this side, negative 2x equals negative 2, x equals 1. Ah, so that's right. So it should be at x equals 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at, um, we've got these two graphs that intersect at the same point. We can find what that point is actually by substituting 1 in to either one of these functions. And if we put 1 in, it happens at negative a half. So in either one. All right, so now what we can do is we are going to be adding these ordinates. So we know that if we add these ordinates together, we double this value of a half. So I'm just going to move my tick mark a little bit. There we go. Excuse me, I'll just draw that back in. And we're going to put our new graph now about there, so about twice as, twice as far. And that's about two. Okay, so the addition of ordinates graph is going in. So it's going to be twice as far, so it was a half where they intersect. Negative a half is now going to be at negative one. Now this graph is going to be following the path of the other two graphs. The reason for that is it's actually trapped between these two asymptotes here, the asymptote at x equals 0 and the asymptote at x equals 2. So these are going to be asymptotes for the graph. Oops. And then over here, we've got a couple of things going on. On this side, we've got this graph getting really, really big and this graph here being really, really small. So you're actually going to have the the dominant part here really is going to be this. You're going to have that sort of shape. And on this side we've got a similar thing happening. This is very small, this is very big, so you're going to have this same kind of shape. It would be, strictly speaking, because this is negative, if you want to be really particular about it, this would be actually a little bit lower. Oops. Which is hard to do with my pen. And then that way. It's a bit lower because this is a negative. So basically the shape of this graph is the red and I'm going to remove the other parts now, the green and the light blue so you can see. Oops, so hard to do. So get rid of that, get rid of that. And that one and that one. So this is the graph that we have now. So this is the addition of ordinates graph that we have um, when we add both of these linear fractions together. We have two asym oh, three asymptotes actually, one horizontal, two vertical. The two vertical asymptotes occur at x equals 2 and x equals 0. The vertical asymptote occurs at y equals 0. Now if we want to find the turning point, you can see from the graph that we have a turning point here at uh, negative 1, uh, 1, negative 1 because of the work we did with our original graphs. But if you wanted to find your turning point um, properly, what you should do is you should use calculus. So what you would do is you'd have your original function, which is over here in the red box, which is x squared minus 2x to the power of negative 1, because underneath. I'm going to do my derivative, first derivative. I'm going to use quick chain rule, so power out the front, 
multiplied by the derivative of the bracket, multiplied by the bracket, and you change the power down by one. And I'm just going to take this to the next page. And then for our turning point, all we need to do is we need to set that equal to zero and find where that happens. Up there. Oops. All right, so this is really the same as negative 2x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x to the um, power of 2, because that's what the negative 2 does. So for our turning point, all we need to do is let our derivative equal 0. So we have 0 equals all of that. And what you'll notice at this point is that when you multiply the denominator over, it disappears because it's 0. So all you're left with is 2x take 2 equal to 0. So that means x equals 1. And if x equals 1, we can sub that back into our original, which is um, x squared minus 2x, 1 on. So we've got... So y of 1 is 1 on 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. So we have a tp at 1, negative 1, which is what we found already on our graph. So you can find the turning point first if you want, that will help you with your sketch. Otherwise, what I'd do is think about the functions you're adding together and then figure out uh, what they look like and then do your addition of ordinates on your graph. And you can do your turning point too by calculus just to make sure it's in the right spot. Okay, so we're going to do these next examples really quick because we've kind of done the first one in a lot of detail. So this graph, what I recognise is it has one denominator. So what you should do is you should split over that denominator because you've got an addition. So you can split it that way. So this means that y is equal to x squared plus 1 on x squared, which is awesome because those graphs are pretty easy to sketch. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to look at these two graphs. I'm going to find the, ooh, the intersection between the two graphs that we're going to be adding. So between x squared and 1 on x squared, just so I can get the graph looking proper. So we're going to let these two graphs equal each other, which means that's x to the 4 equals 1, and that happens when x equals plus or minus 1. So, And also to find the um, corresponding point, if we put x equals 1 into here, so in x squared, when x equals 1, we end up with 1. And same with, um, with negative 1. So that means we've actually got a point here at 1, negative 1, 1. Both of our graphs are going to th go through those two points. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph the parabola in light blue. So that's the classic. Oh, it's a bit dodgy. And the other one I'm going to graph in green. Now this is actually a reciprocal, 1 over x squared. The way a reciprocal works is the intercepts for the original graph. So for example here they become asymptotes. So there is actually an asymptote at uh, x equals 0. And with this x squared graph, the original graph is really big over here, really small here. So it's flipped in the reciprocal. Really big to really small, like that. Really big to really small. It shouldn't have the bumps, but it's a bit hard with my pen. And the truncus graph has an asymptote here as well. The reason for that is you can't have any negative values because the squared makes sure everything here stays positive and is above the x-axis. So we actually have an asymptote at y equals 0 for the uh, one, on x uh, 1 on x squared graph. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to put in our addition of ordinates. Now I know that I have a point here at the point 1, 1. Look for the intercepts first. Remember when we looked at that thing when they're talking about addition of ordinates? When both graphs have the same ordinate, the y-coordinate of the resultant graph will be double this. So what we do is we're going to have a point, which is not 1, but 2, up here. Same x value, but twice as high, because you're adding this twice. And you can see here that in this graph, this is the bigger graph, this is a small graph. So the graph that we draw as addition of ordinates will follow the bigger graph. So it will actually follow this one. On this side, the blue is the bigger graph, this is the smaller graph, so the red will follow this graph. And the same thing happens on this side. Bigger graph is the green, and now the bigger graph is the blue, so we follow the blue. Now you can see you've got two, um, this is basically this function follows two asymptotes. The first one it follows is this asymptote. It will never touch um, the y-axis, so you have an asymptote at x equals zero. The other thing that's neat about this graph is it actually has oh, an asymptote, which is a function. 
which is the y equals x squared graph. That actually behaves as an asymptote. So now what I'm going to do is get rid of all the other bits so you can see the graph that we're left with. So get rid of the green. We don't need that asymptote there anymore. It's a bit hard for me to get rid of. So that's what we're left with. We've got a graph where we've got an asymptote at y equals x squared and an asymptote at x equals 0. And the turning points for this graph, there's one here at 1, 2, and another one here at negative 1, 2. I'm just going to get rid of that point. We don't need that anymore. And that's it. So it's all about splitting this up and identifying that this is actually two graphs and it's addition of ordinates. Sketch the two graphs and then um, do the addition. Now the third one here has actually been split for us. Fun fact with this one, you could do this one with um, polynomial division. You probably think, why would I do that? That's awful. The reason, the powers on the top and the bottom are the same powers. If you have the same powers on the top and the bottom, you should do polynomial division. Now you can either do it by hand or you can do it using the CAS. I'll show you using the CAS um, first actually because it's easy. x squared on x squared plus 1. So you just type in x squared on x squared oops, plus 1. Now when you type it in it will come up just as normal. What you want to do is you want to expand. So you can either go through menu, I'm just going to type it because it's easier. Expand your answer and it expands it automatically for you. 1 minus 1 on x squared plus 1, which is what we know because they gave it to us. But if you didn't have the CAS and you had to do this by long division, you'd set it up. So you'd have how many times does x squared plus 1 um, fit into x squared? So you'd look at the first term only. x squared fits into there one time x squared plus 1 because it comes back over. Then you subtract. x squared minus x squared is 0. There's actually nothing here, so this becomes a negative 1. And what this means is this is our whole number part. So this is going to be its own unit now. It doesn't need this anymore. This is our new numerator. So if we wanted to write this out, it would be the whole part, which is just a 1 plus the new numerator, which happens to be a negative one, so I'm just going to make it a negative here. The new numerator over the old denominator, still the same. And so that's where this comes from. So you can do it either with polynomial division or with your CAS, depending on the situation, which one's more appropriate. So this one we're going to do very similar to the last one. First thing we're going to do is we've got two graphs that we're going to be adding, it's addition of ordinates. Those two graphs are y equals 1 and y equals negative 1 on x squared plus 1. And we're going to look at a couple of things, the shapes and also the intersections. Okay, the first graph is really easy in terms of shape because y equals 1 is just a graph at y equals 1, just a straight line. Oh, ah. like that. Now the second graph that we're looking at is a little bit more complicated and it's actually because this is a reciprocal graph so I'm going to teach you how to look at reciprocal graphs as well while we're doing this. So what we can do is we can look at, consider um, the graph of x squared plus 1 first of all. So we're going to look just at the denominator. So we know that x squared plus 1 is a parabola and it's translated up one unit. Okay, the reciprocal. We're just going to pretend that this is a straight up reciprocal, so I'm going to do this in a different colour, light blue. Let's consider x squared plus 1 as a reciprocal. Don't worry about the negative, just the straight reciprocal. So intercepts become asymptotes. Now in this case we actually don't have any x-intercepts, so there are no asymptotes for this. But what you will notice here is that for the this graph, not this one, this one, this is always positive. And the reason for that is you can't make this bottom line negative in any way. So that means you actually do have an asymptote here. And then we have a bit of a flip going on. And the reason that we have a flip is because we've got um, big values. They're going to become small. Small values are going to become big. The question is what happens in the middle here? So what we can do is let's check what happens 
when x equals 0, that's this middle point here, what is the value of our reciprocal graph? It's going to be 1 on 0 plus 1. It's actually going to be 1. So we actually have the graph, and I probably should have done this a bit bigger, but anyway, um, instead of being really big, being really small, coming up, and then going back down. So it's this idea that you've got the graph, the shape is reversed. So instead of having big, you have small. And here, you just have to find where the turning point is. And in this case, it happens at um, in the middle, because it's symmetric. And it happens when x equals 0, which is the same as the point y equals 1. Now the last step in the green is let's consider negative 1 on x squared plus 1. Now the only difference with this is it's going to be the same shape, but this graph is always negative because of this negative out the front. So this is actually the same graph that's just flipped over. So negative 1 down there. So the graph um, shape for this guy is this little shape. So we've actually done a reciprocal here as well as we're going to do addition of ordinates. That's y equals 1 um, as well. So that's so far. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to try and find the intersects between these two graphs. So we're going to let, let 1 equal negative 1 on x squared plus 1. That means that we have x squared plus 1 equals negative 1, which is x squared plus 2 equals 0. Now, you know that from this graph here, x squared equals negative 2, there are no real solutions. So we actually have no... Um, intercepts in terms of um, in, in for these two graphs they won't actually meet so we're going to do our sketch now oops okay oh what I should also do before I do my sketch is find any turning points so let your derivative equal zero find where that happens so I'm going to use um, this version of the function so that's why I'm using that one. Derivative, um, quick chain rule, that becomes a plus. Um, the derivative of the bracket is 2x. The bracket itself uh, reduced the power by 1. So that was my quick chain rule. And if we let that equal to 0, you end up with um, this whole thing being equal to 0, which is the same as 2x being equal to 0. We end up with x equals 0. So the turning point happens at x equals 0, and that turning point is going to happen um, at this point when y is 1 minus, this is actually 1 on 0 plus 1. So 1 minus 1, it's going to be at 0. So that's cool. So let's do it. Let's graph this thing. A couple of axes. First thing I'm going to graph, I'm going to graph um, this guy, y equals 1. I'm just going to do it there because that's the original graph of that part. Next graph I'm going to do in purple, the reciprocal graph. And we know that that looks like it's down here at negative 1. Asymptotic behavior up to this asymptote. And then we're going to do our addition of ordinate. Ooh our addition of ordinates graph. I'm just going to label this. And we'll do the addition of ordinates in red. So, now the other thing that we looked at with addition of ordinates, check it out, was when both graphs have the opposite ordinate, the resultant graph or y coordinate will be zero. So in this graph, you've got one and negative one. So we actually have a point here in the middle. Now what happens is, you could think of this really as being the reciprocal graph shifted up one. So it's actually just going to be this graph shifted up, translated up one. So this graph is forever a little bit negative to this one. So it's going to be a little bit underneath, same shape. Oops, I'll just do that again. It's a bit dodgy. To there, and then forever a little bit underneath. So we actually have a new asymptote. And this is the shape of our graph. It's this weird reciprocal graph, but it's been translated up one. So we've got an intercept at 0, 0. We have an asymptote at y equals 1. And I'm just going to get rid of the rest of the graphs now so you can see nice and clearly what we're left with, which is that. Oops, hard to get rid of. There we go. 
So that's our graph. It's a reciprocal graph. It's got this funny um, shape, but it's been shifted up one because of that plus one. So these three that we've looked at were examples of addition of ordinates because you're adding different uh, functions together. And this one's pretty cool because you actually had a reciprocal graph as well as the addition of ordinates in there. All right, so similar kind of question. Sketch the graph of the following, labeling all the intercepts with the axes, turning points and asymptotes. Now, this graph here I can see is a reciprocal graph. The reason it's a reciprocal graph is that you've got um, a constant on the top. It can be different to one. It could be 7 or negative 10 or whatever, but it's a constant over a function. And so when we do a reciprocal, what you should do is you should think about the function that's underneath. Sketch that first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to flip. And we're also going to see that any intersections with that graph, they turn into asymptotes. I should say that's x-intercepts, to be particular. So that's what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do is consider just the graph underneath, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now we know this is a um, polynomial, it's a quadratic. We also need to know where the turning points is and where the intercepts are. So there's a couple of ways that you could do this. x squared plus 2x plus 1 you can factor. So I'm just going to do x squared plus 2x plus 1. So you could do this, of course, yourself, and you know that it's um, x plus 1 all squared. But if you can't, if any have trouble factoring, you can use your CAS to help you factor. We can also put this into turning point form, um, and we can do that by using the method of complete the square, and that would give us a turning point. Or for our turning point, we could just do the derivative. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just write out, we know this is x plus 1 all squared. So we know that we've got for this graph, we've got um, x-intercepts, which are going to happen at x equals negative 1. So this particular graph has repeated x-intercept, which means it just touches the x-intercept there. And um, turning points, with this one we know that the turning point happens at the intersection. Okay, So we know that we actually have a turning point at negative 1. So let's sketch this thing. Okay, whoops, um, I'm going to do this in light blue. So I'm going to do the graph of the function as the denominator, that is the denominator here. So we've got, ne uh, we've got 1, negative 2, um, 2, Should label my axes. Now, just to be particular about it, I know that when x equals um, negative 1, I'm going to have negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 plus 1, we know that's 0 because we know that that's where the, um, the graph touches. Um, we should also probably find where we have y-intercepts as well. So if we let x equal 0, we're going to find just the y-int. And so we're going to have, for this graph here, we'd have, um, that would happen at 1. So we're going to have this kind of oops, shape like that. I might just do that again, it's a bit nicer. Okay, so that's this graph, it's the denominator that we've sketched. Now what we're going to do is we're going to graph the reciprocal. And we're going to do this in green. 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 1. Um, we've sketched the original, now we flip. And what happens is that any x-intercepts become asymptotes in the reciprocal function. So we actually have an asymptote at x equals negative 1. And we flip the graph was big over here is now going to be small, was small over here is now going to be big. Now the question you might be asking is how we know where the crossing is over here. So again you can do a similar thing, so you can substitute what happens in this function um, when, oops, when x equals 0, and when x equals 0 in your original function it's going to be 1 on 1. So it will actually cross over here and has this kind of vibe. So it's a truncus, and the reason it's a truncus is because whenever you have one over a um, parabola like that, whenever you have one over a shape that has an intercept, as long as it has an x-intercept, it will always be a truncus. It will just be shifted left or right. Um, what can happen is if you have a parabola that's up higher, you'll end up with a weird sort of hill graph that we've seen before, and if you have a parabola that's lower, you're going to end up with flipping that's a bit different as well because some of it's negative. 
Um, but yeah, basically this is just a reciprocal graph, um, a point going through here and then an asymptote and that's really all you need to show. Okay, this is an addition of ordinates graph because you've got things added together, but you've actually got three things. Now, because we've only talked about how to add two graphs together, make this into two graphs. I'm actually going to rewrite this as x squared plus 2. I'm going to make that one graph and then I'm going to make the other, the one on x squared, the other graph. So now all I need to do is sketch them again as we've done before. Um, oh, a couple of things that you probably want to do here. I'm going to do this slightly different to how I've done it in the past with the other examples. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my um, intersections between my two graphs before I do any sketching. So I've got x squared plus 2 as one graph and x squared. And I'm just going to let them equal each other. x to the 4 plus 2x squared equals 1. So we have that equation. It's actually just a parabola. Um, it's just hidden, so x squared is equal to a, for example. That would be a squared plus 2a minus 1. But we can just use the CAS to solve that. So I'm just going to do solve x to the power of 4 plus 2x squared minus 1 equals 0, solve for x. Whoa, that's pretty ugly. I'm just going to do an approximate. Okay. So plus or minus 0.64. It's just to help me to know where I am. And then if I do um, the y part of that, that would be y would be 1 on this squared. So I'll just do it over that squared. So 2.44. It's just rough, roughly um, so I know where I am. Okay, so they're the intersections. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit of calculus. I'm going to find the turning point or turning points for my original graph. Just moving things around a little bit. Okay. TPs for the function. They're going to happen when the derivative is equal to zero. So again, I'm going to just do my derivative. Derivative of x squared is 2x, derivative of 2 is 0. This is um, really x to the negative 2. So that derivative is negative 2x to the negative 3. So it's the same as 2x minus 2 on x cubed. And I'm going to let that equal 0. So oops, scrunch that a bit. Okay, so we've got... Oops. Oh, it's unhappy. There we go. 2x minus 2 on x cubed. And I'm going to solve that equal to 0. Solve it for x. Plus or minus 1. gx equals 0 gives us x equals plus or minus 1. So that means we have turning points at plus or minus 1. And where those happen, you can substitute 1 in. You're going to get 1 plus 1 plus 2, so at 4. And you're actually going to find that for negative 1, it's the same because these are all squared. So we have TPs at 1, 4 and negative 1, 4. And we've also got some uh, intersections from our original graphs. So let's do it going to graph my x squared plus 2 graph in green first. x squared is just a parabola, yeah, but plus 2 means it's up 2. So that is x squared plus 2. The next one is the um, truncus, 1 on x squared, which has that familiar kind of shape. has an asymptote up the middle there at uh, x equals 0. And it also has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Now we draw in our addition of ordinates graph. Now I know that this happened at around 0.64 and 2.44. So I'm going to just sort of draw a point double this height here. And double that height over there. 
Now we have a turning point. We actually know that it's at negative 1 and 1, so about sort of here. Then sort of there. And I'm going to draw that in. And we know that the turning point at the bottom of this graph, I'm just going to get rid of those dots actually because it looks like a turning point, but it's not. It's just helping me sketch my graph. Yep. Turning point at the bottom here is going to be at 1, 4 or negative 1, 4. And this information here just basically helps me to get an idea of where the graph should be. Now we've seen a graph like this before. It's got two sort of asymptotic behaviours going on. It's got this one where it's approaching this graph and it's got the approach on this middle asymptote, which is going to be at x equals 0. The other asymptote here is the parabola, which is x squared plus 2. That's the um, non-vertical asymptote. So the graph that we have looks like this. Let's get rid of all the green. There we go. So it's a graph with two asymptotes, a curved one and a vertical one, and then the two turning points you can see at 1, negative, uh, 1 4 and negative 1, 4. Okay, so these last two examples we're going to do with the CAS because we've done lots of stuff by hand now. So the first thing we're going to do is it says here we've got a graph. We've got y equals x minus 5 plus 4 on x, which you'll recognize as two graphs added together. First thing it says is find the coordinates of the points of intersection with the axes. So we're going to have our x-intercepts or intercepts, we're not sure, when y equals 0. And we're going to have our y when x equals 0. So all we need to do is plug in our function. So I'm just going to do this with the CAS. I'm actually going to define it. I'm going to call it y1 because I've got two things that I'm going to be doing. So y1 and then you can do um, control and then moustache button with the little dot, double dot equals to define. x minus 5 plus 4 on x. So that's now defined in there. I can use it for heaps of stuff. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find what is y1 when x equals 0. So I just type in y1 and that vertical line is under the um, equals sign. So control equals. And you can see that that is undefined. So that means that we have none for the y-intercept. For the x-intercepts, we're going to let 0 equal our function. And we're actually going to solve for x. And that happens at 1 and 4. And if you want to check whether they're correct, you could actually um, type in y1, what happens when. If we put in the answer, it'll check what happens when x equals 1 and when x equals 4. And that's actually 0 for both, so that is definitely correct. So our x-intercepts happen at 1 and 4. So that's done. So we've done part A. Next part is the equation of the asymptotes. Now I would actually do this after we've done our graph. So I'm not going to do that now, but I will do C. So the turning points. Remember turning points are when our derivative is equal to zero. So we can go to the CAS. We can go to the little button here um, and we can find our derivative. Now the derivative is that, that one there, dd something, ddx, and it's the function y1 that I called y1. So we're going to differentiate it. We're also going to set that derivative equal to zero. And if you want to be fully clever and do it all in one go, we solve that for x. And you can see the points there where that happens. So the turning points are at negative 2 and 2. And again, you can test what those values are um, at those points. So now it's a bit unhappy about it, so we're just going to do them one at a time. Negative 9 and negative 1. So our points are going to be at negative 2, the corresponding y-coordinate is negative 9, and at 2, the corresponding um, y-coordinate is negative 1. So negative 2, negative 9, and 2, negative 1. I think that was right. Okay, so there are turning points, so that's cool. Use this information to sketch the curve. We haven't done our um, asymptotes yet, but we will. So we're going to do our sketch now. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the CAS for the sketch as well, and then just use the information that we have to help us to draw it properly. So I'm going to put it all into the CAS. There we go. Now this is a 
um, good idea or a good example of why it's good to do things a little bit by hand before you sketch with the CAS, because of the way our window is, C negative six um, point six seven in the Y, we are actually missing the other part of the graph. And I only know that because I know from the work we did we should get two turning points. So it's really good doing it this way before you do a graph and just graphing stuff because you're actually thinking about what you what you need to be able to see in your graph. So I'm just going to change, um, go menu, window and window settings and I'm going to change, I know I need to go from negative 10 so that's probably fine to 10 but I'm going to go down to negative probably 12 so I can catch this one. It doesn't really matter there. And if you want to be particular with your scaling, you can make the scales one, so it'll go up in ones. And here as well. There we go. And so that now has all of the information we need. You can probably tell from here too, now with all your experience doing these graphs, you've got an asymptote that's a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. That comes from this part, the hyperbola. x minus five would have been this graph here, a straight line, and that straight line has become the other asymptote. So you actually have this x minus 5 as an asymptote and x equals 0 as an asymptote, which came from the hyperbola. So we can sketch the shape and we can put in all our information. I'm just going to do this in light blue. So I'm just going to do the sketch really quick. Um, Okay, so if you were doing this, you'd do it sort of a bit more precisely, but that's fine. So we've got um, turning points at negative 2 and negative 9, which is here, and another one at the point 2, negative 1, which is here. And we know from looking at the graph that it has that kind of shape. You can actually see straight up the intercepts, the 1 and 4, which we already knew from over here. And we know that we have no y-intercepts, so 1 and 4. And because we have no y-intercepts, we know that we've got an asymptote at this point, and this is at um, y equals 0, uh, x equals 0, excuse me. And we've got another asymptote which is the straight line. Now the straight line is this x minus 5 straight line and if you want to sketch that properly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that goes through the point 5 and when x equals 0, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 goes there. It's basically a straight line that goes through like that. So that's the asymptote um, x minus, oops, minus 5 And we can do our graph. I'll do this in red. So we've got the shape approaching the asymptote, going through the intercepts and approaching. We've got 1, 0, 4, 0, turning point of 2, negative 1. And here, nothing much to show except the turning point at negative 2, negative 9. So that's our graph. We've used the CAS to help us graph it. We used our CAS to help us find the x-intercepts here and here, to find the turning points, um, and also to find the general shape. So to finish off, we're going to do one last one. Great idea if you want to have a go at this one as well. We're going to use the CAS for this one. Um, um, so have a go first, and then we'll go through it with the CAS. Okay, last question. You're going to do it with the CAS. Find the coordinates of the turning points and determine the nature of each point. So we're going to do this using the CAS for the derivative. You can do it by hand. I'm just going to define my function. I'm going to call it y2. It's 8 lots of x plus 1 on 2x squared. So that's my function. I'm going to differentiate that function with respect to x. So differentiate y2. And I'm going to set that equal to 0 and solve. So I'm going to solve that equal to 0, solve for x. So I get x equals a half. So I've got a coordinate, x coordinate of the turning point at x equals a half. I'm going to find the y coordinate that goes with that. So um, I'll just put the answer. So for the function y2, when x equals a half, y equals 6. So we have a turning point at a half 6. 
so TP at half six, and we need to determine the nature of the of the point. So to do that, now we're just making sure that we weren't missing anything. Yeah, yep. So there's only the one point, so that's fine. So we're going to um, look at what type of point this is. You can either use the table, which you will have done in methods, or for us, what we can do is we can check the point x equals a half in the second derivative. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our function y2, we're going to do the second derivative this time, so the button, it's in the little moustache button, second derivative of the function, the original function, we get this, and what we're going to do is we're going to check what happens when we put, and I'm just going to write this down here, which is, oops, 3 on x to the power of 4, we're going to check what happens when we substitute x equals a half in there. So we just do um, answer such that x equals a half, like that. We get 48. So because we get um, 48 in our second derivative, which is positive, that means that we have positive concavity. So that means that this point, a half 6, is going to be a minimum. And it's because it would have to occur at the bottom of this positive smiley face concavity. Yep, so that's part A done. Part B is the sketch. So we're going to do a um, quick thing with this. I'm just going to check intercepts again with it. So I'm just going to check um, x ints. So when, oops, when y equals 0. And I'm going to check y ints might be more than one when x equals zero check both of them so we just do them in the original so I've got my function I called it y2 check what happens when x equals zero it's infinity so there's going to be um, um, none or asymptote and check what happens when y equals zero so we let the function equal zero and then we solve that for x so, ooh, it's really ugly. I'm just going to do approximate negative 0.4, approximately. All right, so now we're going to do the sketch. So we're going to pop this function in. Now, because I've already defined it, this is here, you can just use um, y2. It's already been defined, so that makes it easy. And we can see here we know that we've got a half um, 6 is going to be our point. Now our function looks really weird, so I'm just going to zoom. Ooh, we'll zoom back in again. So I know that I had a turning point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ooh. And I'm just going to check as well. If you were just doing this, um, without having done it by hand. Remember that you can always do your analyze your graph and you can find a minimum. So select your lower bounds. So now we can sketch. So we know what our graph looks like. We know what our intercept was. It was negative 0.4 and we know our turning point and we know there's an asymptote. So we can sketch it. So all we have to do is just chuck in our axes. One, two, and I'm just gonna do these points approximately negative 0.4 is over here and we've got our graph going through that and then we've also got our turning point which is over here so that was at a half six that kind of thing now what you've probably picked up from the graph is that you've got asymptotic behavior I'm going to zoom out again so you can see it a little bit more clearly and you can see that it's sort of got a straight it's straight following a straight sort of line and the reason for that is that you've got the two a uh, one on two x squared remember that's the truncus part so that gives us this asymptote up the middle which is at x equals zero this part 8x is the straight line which goes through and actually you probably should do that on more of an angle which goes through the origin but is quite steep so this is y equals 8x, 
and that's our other asymptote. We actually have two asymptotes. So our graph is behaving so that it approaches those two asymptotes, the straight line, and then also the vertical asymptote. You've shown your turning point, which we found using our CAS, and our x-intercept, which we found using our CAS as well. Now just a point about this graph. This wouldn't be acceptable in an exam because your graph was actually going away from the asymptote, and neither would that because it's touching. So be really particular about, it's very hard with this pen, but making sure your asymptote you're approaching the asymptote, but you're not touching it. And similarly here, if we want to be really particular, we should have it really going close to and then sort of approaching but not touching. So that would really be the way to do it to make sure that you're getting your full marks in that final exam. All right, that was looking at reciprocals. Remember, reciprocal graphs are the ones where you have one over something or a constant over something. Addition of ordinates graphs are when you're adding multiple functions together. Easiest thing to do, good tip, is just make it so that you have two functions all the time, group the other terms to make one function out of them, so that way you only have to know how to add two functions at a time.